in just a few minutes. Pete, thank you. We are working developing news this morning out of Italy. That's where a powerful earthquake has rocked the same area devastated by a quake back in August. New now 8 o'clock. Pope Francis says he's praying for those affected. At 7, we told you the 6.6 .6 quake is believed to be the strongest to hit Italy now since 1980. Also learning now some of Rome's most important tourist sites closed temporarily. Some of the buildings that made it through both last week's and August quakes have collapsed. We're told some people did suffer injuries. We don't yet know their extent. Just this past Wednesday, I reported for you that 1,300 people were displaced by several powerful aftershocks. The odd earthquake back in August killed close to 300 people. Pope Francis made that trip to some of the hardest hit towns to offer his prayers just recently. Our top local story for you this morning, the Coast Guard and local officials say a 60-year-old rescued off the coast of Fort Wetherall after falling off his sailboat just after midnight, Coast Guard received a call from Jamestown police saying that man was clinging to his sailboat for two hours. A police officer was with him on that scene in a kayak. Couldn't save him alone, though. So the Coast Guard launched a 45-foot response boat. The man, we're told, was treated for hypothermia and was taken to Newport Hospital. New this morning, Eyewitness News on the scene alongside firefighters in Providence. Our crew also saw one firefighter on a stretcher. We do have calls out to the fire department to learn more about what happened there. We'll be sure to update you both right here on air and online throughout the day as we learn more. Also an update for you now on a crash in Somerset. Police say one of the drivers used heroin and cocaine before the crash. Eyewitness News reporter Kim Kalunian has more. Police tell us the driver actually admitted to using drugs before the crash with his young child in the car. A stunning scene on Route 6 in Somerset Friday night. It's incredible. It's, yeah, it looks like a fatality, but fortunately there isn't one. A black car crushed beneath a tractor trailer after police say the driver blew through a red light at the intersection of Route 6 and Lees River Avenue. Somerset Police Chief George McNeil tells Eyewitness News the driver of that car, 30-year-old Matthew Leonardo of Somerset, admitted to police he took a combination of heroin and cocaine while inside his car. They believe he may have nodded off before approaching the intersection, never even applying the brakes at a red light. I hear this boom so I thought I blew a tire but as I look through my rearview mirror I see this I'm dragging a car. We spoke with Ben Fowler who was behind the wheel of the tractor trailer. He says he prayed the man and the six-year-old girl inside the crushed car would be okay. Police say both are expected to make full recoveries but Leonardo is facing charges including driving under the influence and reckless endangerment of a child. Those who saw the collision and its aftermath agree. It's a miracle Leonardo and his daughter walked away. Lord was with him if he's, uh, if he's alive. The Lord was definitely with him. And at last check, Leonardo was still in the hospital. It's unclear when he will be able to appear in court. Police tell us the driver of the tractor trailer was not at fault. In the newsroom, Kim Kalunian, Eyewitness News. The driver who crashed in Barrington late Friday night now facing DUI charges. Barrington Police Chief John LaCrosse says five juveniles were inside that car when the female driver crashed into the woods. The driver also refused a chemical test. Two months ago, one person was critically injured near that same spot. A neighbor nearby says she's seen a lot of crashes there. And a car went into her basement. It hit the foundation and it landed in her basement. That was years ago. The conditions of those passengers from Friday night not yet known this morning. A Dartmouth man who lost control and thrown from his motorcycle has now died. Police in Westport say 57-year-old Daniel Levesque of Dartmouth died at Rhode Island Hospital. He collided with a Jeep that was backing out of a driveway over a week ago on Highland Avenue. Police say Levesque tried to stop but lost control and was thrown from the bike. Massachusetts State Police continue their investigation. Pinpoint News Tracker taking you now to Cove Road in Dartmouth at Miller's Home Port, where authorities investigated reports of shots fired. This was very early yesterday. Then a few hours later, police in New Bedford responded to a disturbance at the 7-Eleven on West Rodney French Boulevard. Officials now believe 24-year-old Brendan Furtado of South Dartmouth is tied to both of those. Police also now say a gun found on him is from a 2009 home break-in. Furtado is charged with weapons offenses, disorderly conduct, and robbery. Police in New Bedford cracking down on drug trafficking for the third time over the last week. Police charging two Rhode Island men with trafficking more than 36 grams of fentanyl. 
21-year-old Francisco Ruz Franco of Providence and 25-year-old Gabri Javier de Lopez of Central Falls both were stopped in the 700 block of Kempton Street on Friday. Police say they found 39 plastic bags filled with that powerful opioid, a digital scale, and about $350 in cash. Two days ago, 120 grams of fentanyl was seized by New Bedford police. On Tuesday, again, all this week, they took in 66 grams of fentanyl near Allen Street and Rockdale Avenue. That shellfish ban we've been monitoring now lifted this weekend after a harmful algae bloom has dwindled. Environmental officials in Rhode Island say all conditional harvesting areas will stay closed until Friday, despite recent rainfall. Those locations include Area A, Connecticut Triangle, Greenwich Bay, and Mount Hope Bay. Area B is open. Cubs fans back at Wrigley hoping to knock the series at two. Bottom one, things went as planned. Anthony Rizzo singled, scoring Dexter Fowler. But top two, the wheels started to come off for the Cubs as Carlos Santana drives a John Lackey delivery deep to left. Unfortunately, Cleveland starter, too much to handle for Chicago. Cubs fall 7 2. It's going to be tough. I mean, there's scouts on, on everybody nowadays. You can't get away with anything the way the numbers and the metrics and all that stuff out there nowadays. You got to be able to make some adjustments. And right now they're doing that uh, better than we are. Both teams back at it tonight. First pitch, 8 p.m. 8.08 is our time. More local coverage coming up on Eyewitness News this morning. A boat built by General Dynamics Electric. It's active now. We'll have those details coming up. And dancing against drunk drivers. What mothers against drunk driving now doing at the Crown Plaza Hotel? As we had to break, here's a look at last night's winning lottery numbers. Good morning, I'm meteorologist Pete Mangione. How's it going, everybody? We have some sunshine out there. Clouds also coming through, so it's sort of a mixed bag with clouds and sun today. Much milder than yesterday. That is the big theme of today. We will have some late arriving showers, but a good part of the daylight hours will be rain-free. We'll break it down coming up in just a few minutes. Brian.
Pete, thanks so much. Monsters are taking over the streets of Providence today. There are several ripped to detours for this morning as well. The Monster Dash 5K Kids Monster Dash happening this morning. Participants of this fun Halloween run, they'll go right through Ripta's historic bus tunnel all while wearing their Halloween outfits. Here's the breakdown. Ripta says routes 1, 33, 34, 92, all detoured from 10 until noon. Routes 35, 60, and 78 will be detoured from 9 until 12.30. The race does kick off at 11 o'clock this morning. Looking ahead, more than 200 people expected to be at Slater Park in Pawtucket later today for Rhode Island's Walk for Epilepsy. The goal is to help support those with epilepsy and to raise awareness. Congressman David Cicilline, the honorary chair today. Lieutenant Governor Daniel McKee is also expected to attend. Also looking ahead, Rhode Island celebrities dancing at the Crown Plaza to help raise money and awareness for mothers against drunk driving. Our very own Tony Petraca is a judge for the event. Keep in mind, he's a judge and not a dancer. Oh. Big difference there, but still important he's there. Uh, it'll feature a night of fun entertainment, of course, lots of competition. Matt's goal is to give victims of drunk driving a voice. 812 is our time still to come on Eyewitness News. Taking a look at a new Mexican restaurant in Providence in this week's Quick Bites plus hitting the open water after being built right here in Rhode Island. Welcome back in this morning's Quick Bites. Our TV maitre d' visits a Providence restaurant where he says family traditions and delicious food make it a perfect fit for the neighborhood. Here's Joe Zito with this week's Quick Bites. Well, it's an authentic family-owned Mexican restaurant here on historic Federal Hill. And es muy bueno. Welcome to Las Margaritas. 210 Atwell's Ave, where the Blue Grotto was for 34 years, is where you'll find this new slice of Mexican life. Co-owner Miguel Roman. We came up with the margaritas because we had our special recipes. They're fresh, they're delicious, and we make them because we know it's part of our culture, and we try to make it better every day. Joining Miguel on the ownership team are his wife, Elda, and her brothers, Castulo and Jorge Vasquez, along with an accommodating staff of family members and other dedicated employees. Executive Chef Castulo uses his 30 years of experience to create delicious and generous portions of authentic Mexican food. Mexico is so big. Mexico is huge. We had different regions, different recipes, so we tried to put every 
Mexico recipe in this menu. You'll find a vast and varied array of apps for sharing, preferably with one of their four different sizes of margaritas. There are enchiladas, fajitas, burritos, combination plates, delicious meats, fresh seafood, and so much to enjoy. Several vegetarian choices, too. There's also fresh guacamole made for you tableside, and plenty of room for private parties here, too. And a nice touch is the way they kept the Cianci room in honor of the late mayor. He was part of the city, he was part of this neighborhood. Let's keep the name. We bring jobs to the city. We hire people to make living to the city. I mean, pay taxes, help the families. And we're proud of this project. We don't want to change the culture. We don't want to change Federal Hill to Mexico. We want just be part of this Federal Hill. For Eyewitness News this morning, I'm TV Maitre D. Joe Zito with this week's Quick Bite. Now, here's meteorologist Pete Mangione with your live Pinpoint Doppler 12 future cast. Good morning. A couple of weather headlines for today. First of all, much milder than yesterday and a decent day for the outdoors. We will have some late arriving showers. We're going to break down that timing in just a second. First, though, I want to start with live pinpoint Doppler 12. We're going to zoom in to Providence where we have the Monster Dash going on today. The Monster Dash 5K with all the kids out there in their costumes. 63 at 11 o'clock in the morning when the event gets started. Not too much of a temperature change throughout the late morning and afternoon. So actually pretty good conditions to be out there for a 5K this morning. And in terms of the rainfall timing, here we go into the 2 p.m. hour. After 2 p.m. there will be a chance of a sprinkle here or there, but really things do not fill in until after 5 or 6. So after sunset the showers start to become heavier and steady year and continue off and on through about midnight after this point they clear out and that will bring in a dry and Sunday sunny Monday morning commute. Speaking of sunny, we have some sunshine in Newport with the uh, sun reflecting off of the water. And we won't have sun the entire day, but certainly we will have some breaks of sun in between the clouds with our temperatures already in the 50s. 55 in Providence, 58 in Newport westerly, sitting one degree shy of 60 degrees with our winds fairly calm around five miles an hour in Smithfield. Nothing too impressive. On average, winds about five to 10 miles an hour today. And it's all because we have this weak system. I'm gonna call it weak because I don't expect a ton of rain from this. We'll get a few heavy showers possible later on this evening as it glides on through. Behind it, some cooler winds come in from the north. That's gonna dry the atmosphere out and lead to a rain-free but cool Halloween. This afternoon, getting up to around 63 and then 66 by 3 p.m. A slight chance of a shower at this point, but again, a much better chance when maybe you're driving home from your friend's house. Maybe you went there to watch the Pats game. A much better chance to get the showers on the way home from that as opposed on the way to your friend's house to watch the game. 66 in Charlestown, Hope Valley at 65, 66 Westerly and 66 in Narragansett. So maybe you're not a football fan. You're not going to watch the game today. A beautiful day to spend outdoors, especially before the showers get here. Looking at mid 60s for places like Burville, Foster and Situate, 63 in Coventry. Eastern Massachusetts temperatures also in the 60s with 64 in Attleboro, 64 Seekonk and mid 60s also from Westport down to Dartmouth. You have these winds coming in from the northwest that tends to even things out. So we're not looking at a situation today where the coast is a lot cooler than inland areas. Here comes Halloween in the seven day future cast 51 for high tomorrow. So it's cool, but it's dry and it's sunny. It's a clear, cool night for trick or treating. Again, I hope you're not too scared by those scary looking jack-o-lanterns. Brian Yacona looks a little frightened over there at the desk. 7 p.m. 44 degrees with clear skies. 9 p.m. We're down to 41. And then we bring in a milder weather pattern, especially towards the middle of the week. Notice 66 on Wednesday. How about 70 for Thursday? Now, this may only be inland areas that get close to the 70s. We'll have to keep an eye on that. But in terms of records, well, the record is actually 78 degrees, so likely not getting that close to that. But we will be well above normal. The record on Thursday is 58 degrees, so some warm stuff on the way. And then some showers likely Thursday night into Friday morning. That front will knock down our temperatures back into the 50s. And then on Saturday, at this point, we are looking rain free with high temperatures in the upper 50s to around 60 degrees. I should also point out your Halloween future cast a little on the breezy side tomorrow, even a little breezy through tomorrow evening. But, you know, Halloween, we're kind of used to the cooler temperatures. The good news is no rain. The worst kind of Halloween weather, mm. at least from my perspective, is when you have the cold rain coming down. When I've had Halloweens like that in the past, not so Unpleasant. much fun. 
Yep. Plus, who likes a costume with a raincoat over Nobody it? Nobody needs ruins that. ruins everything. Nobody needs that. All right, we're in good shape. Pete, thanks so much. Yep. Covering New England for you this morning, the Navy's newest submarine built by Electric Boat. It started active service now. The boat USS Illinois, designed by General Dynamics Electric Boat. It was built in Connecticut, here in Rhode Island, also Virginia. Captain Jess Porter says it's the crew that brings the ship to life. First Lady Michelle Obama says supporting military families is her priority. Police in Boston say it's possible that a teenager was the target of a daytime shooting on Washington Street in Dorchester. A woman was shot and killed, that teenager wounded. Members of the local community say they've had enough and that they should be able to walk down the street without ducking from bullets or running for cover. 822 on your Sunday morning. Still to come on Eyewitness News, thousands walking to benefit a worthy charity. Plus, the first pot shop opens up in one state while people were lining up at the doors so early. We're at 55 degrees. Live look outside over the bay. You can see that sunshine. A little cloud cover as well. Pete's tracking what you can expect in your future cast. It's coverage you can count on. Good morning, I'm meteorologist Pete Mangiona. We have a mixed bag out there. We have some sun, we have clouds, and we have much milder temperatures compared to this time yesterday morning into the 50s, some places close to 60. We'll be in the upper 60s for high temperatures today. If you have outdoor plans, well, the good news is showers holding off until pretty late in the day. We're going to break down the timing on that, talk about your Halloween trick-or-treating future cast, and also talk about at least potentially some 70s on the way for the work week. Those details coming up in just a few minutes. Brian. Pete, thank you. Covering America this morning, some faith groups from Minnesota are now joining that protest against the Dakota Access Pipeline. Unitarian Universalist Group is part of the rally this weekend in Bismarck, North Dakota. Separate protests. They've been going on for months now. This is right at the pipeline construction site. Those who oppose the pipeline say it would hurt the environment and also would destroy some Native American sites. But the developers urge that the U.S. could cut its need for foreign oil and it would also boost the economy. Thousands making strides against cancer in Alabama this weekend. This was the ninth annual breast cancer walk, raising money for the American Cancer Society. About 20,000 people all coming together to spread awareness and also celebrate with friends and family who have gone through so much. The first pot shop in Alaska opened this weekend where people started lining up at 8 o'clock yesterday morning. 
People there said they showed up because they just wanted to be part of history. Patrons both young and old were there. As of right now, two more shops plan to open in Fairbanks next week with Herbal Outfitters in Anchorage following soon after. And a Utah teenager says, you know what, a haunted house took it too far. She said the house got physical with her. This place is known as a full contact haunted house. The attraction said the customers know this when they come in. A sign is printed outside. Each visitor is required to sign a waiver. Just shy of 8.30 now on your Sunday morning. Still to come on, on Eyewitness News. Election Day, nine days away. We're hearing from a local town clerk to see how many residents have now cast their ballots before the big day. Plus, Pawsox memorabilia for sale at McCoy Stadium. We'll give you a look at what was up for grabs. A much milder day on the way with some late arriving showers. We'll break down the timing coming up after the break. You're watching Eyewitness News on WPRI 12. It's coverage you can count on. Now, live on WPRI 12 and on WPRI.com, this is Eyewitness News This Morning. Coverage you can count on. Early voting in Massachusetts reportedly pretty successful so far. We're breaking down the numbers for you this weekend. Plus, we hear from the Paw Sox general manager after its first barnyard sale and open house. We'll give you a look at what happened there. A live look from 95 this morning. Those changes continue on the Providence Viaduct. We have some important information in case you're headed out on 95 this morning. Those lanes keep shifting over. The message, however, from DOT, stay in your lane. Some good advice there. Very good advice. All right, there is a race in downtown Providence this morning, 5K. Look for some folks in costumes. That's right. Some scary little tykes running around, Absolutely. right? Doing the 5K 
that would be 11 o'clock in the morning and actually some nice mild weather for that. Yeah. Temperatures will be in the 60s and it's going to kind of look like this. See how it's kind of a milky looking sky, yeah. Brian? Comfortable to be outside. Exactly. And we'll hold off on the rain until late in the day. So today is not a washout by any means. You can get things done outdoors. 54 your temperature in Smithfield right now. 55 Providence already one degree shy of 60 in Newport. Same thing here in Westerly. So if you needed the hat and the gloves and the jacket yesterday morning for that early morning walk or jog, you will not be needing that this morning. Live pinpoint Doppler 12 is dry, but we are tracking some showers off to our west. These will get here primarily just before sunset. We'll talk about the timing a bit more in a few minutes. In the meantime, we're looking at temperatures rising into the upper 60s. Keep in mind yesterday's high temperatures in the upper 50s, so about 10 degrees warmer today, despite the fact we'll have a decent amount of clouds with some sun mixed in. About a 20% chance of showers at 3 p.m., a much higher chance by 5 or 6. We're going to talk a lot more about your future cast for today and take a special look at the Halloween future cast coming up in just a few minutes. 831 as we check today's top stories for you now. Providence fire crews busy on a scene overnight. Eyewitness News was there as a firefighter was taken from that scene on a stretcher. We have made calls to the fire department to learn more for you. As we get new information, we'll have it for you right here and also at WPRI.com. Please tell us the driver of a car on Route 6 in Somerset admitted to them to using drugs before crashing that car with his child inside. According to police, 30-year-old Matthew Leonardo took heroin and cocaine before blowing through a red light and slamming into that tractor trailer truck. At last check, Leonardo is still hospitalized. His six-year-old daughter is said to be okay. We continue learning more about the crash we told you about right here yesterday morning. Five juveniles were hurt when the driver of their car reportedly drove into the woods Friday night. According to Barrington's police chief, the driver of the vehicle was charged with DUI just two months ago. One person was critically injured in a crash in that same curve. More local coverage for you this morning. Thousands of you have voted early in Massachusetts now, and we're breaking down the numbers for you this weekend. Eyewitness News reporter Julianne Pixoto has our campaign 2016 coverage. This year, Massachusetts joins the more than 30 states that already offered early voting. As of Thursday night, state officials tell us nearly 290,000 Bay State residents had already cast their ballots. Hundreds of Seekonk residents are asking, why wait until November 8th? We've had over 700 people early vote so far. We have over 10,000 registered voters. So between the early voters and the absentee voters, we've had uh, over 10% of people vote already in Seekonk. Town Hall isn't normally this busy on a weekend, but dozens of people stopped by Saturday to take advantage of early voting. They gave a lot of opportunity, a lot of different dates, a lot of time. I didn't think they'd have Saturday voting, and here we are Saturday morning. It's perfect. The response we've had, our people love it. They're like, they, they're walking out of here. This is the best idea ever. Most Massachusetts town and city halls are early voting locations. Residents say it's a much different experience than voting on Election Day. I was in and out in literally 30 seconds, so um, this was definitely a quicker, uh, quicker process than normally. I'm actually going to be traveling um, on November 8th, so I wasn't going to be around, so this is a very convenient thing. Early voting started in the state on Monday and continues through November 4th. It's been successful so far. We'd like to see a few more people, and I hope next week, now that the word is out, that we'll get more people coming in to vote. To find out where and when you can cast your ballot, visit MassEarlyVoting.com. In the control room, I'm Julianne Pixoto, Eyewitness News. Some developing news this weekend. A Dartmouth man who lost control and was thrown from his motorcycle has now died. Police in Westport say 57-year-old Daniel Levesque of Dartmouth died at Rhode Island Hospital. He collided with a Jeep that was backing out of a driveway over a week ago on Highland Avenue. Police say Levesque tried to stop but lost control and was thrown from the bike. Massachusetts State Police continue their investigation. Pinpoint News Tracker taking you now to Cove Road in Dartmouth at Miller's Homeport. Authorities were investigating reports of shots fired around 2 yesterday morning. A few hours later, police in New Bedford responded to a disturbance at the 7-Eleven on Rodney French Boulevard. Well, officials believe 24-year-old Brendan Furtado of South Dartmouth is tied to both of those. Police also say a gun found on him is from a 2009 home break-in. He's charged with weapons offenses, disorderly conduct, and robbery. A reminder for you, as part of that ongoing Providence Viaduct work continues, traffic pattern has changed this weekend again. Transportation officials say stay in your lane. Here's what it looks like from left to right. There is one through lane. This is 95 South. Then there's the divider. Two more lanes going south on 95. Then an exit only lane to exit 21. That's Atwell's Avenue. Lastly, two exit 22 lanes to downtown.
Shellfish ban lifted now after that harmful algae bloom has dwindled. Environmental officials in Rhode Island say all conditional harvesting areas will stay closed, though, until next Friday, even with the recent rainfall. Those locations include Area A, Connecticut Triangle, Greenwich Bay, and Mount Hope Bay. Area B, however, is open. Hundreds of you stopping by McCoy Stadium this weekend. Saturday was the first Ballard sale, ball yard sale, excuse me, in fall open house. Paw Sox fans given the chance to buy game used equipment and some memorabilia. Season ticket holders weren't the only ones there. Some new faces stopped by as well. Your diehards, your loyal season ticket holders and frequent visitors, and then maybe some people who haven't been here before who are coming here for a first time to get an autographed ball or a cool collectible item for a dorm room. By the way, there's also a trick-or-treating event at McCoy tomorrow. That is from 3.30 to 6.30. Time now for your Sunday local roundup. If on Election Day, recreational pot passes in Massachusetts. We've learned Rhode Island's Governor Gina Raimondo said in a recent interview they will have to take a look at the future of marijuana here in Rhode Island. You can read more about that story and everything you need to know. It's in the Sunday local roundup. Just head over to our homepage this morning at WPRI.com. 8.37 coming up on Eyewitness News this morning, a special story for a woman who was attacked back in May at a restaurant in Taunton. And a transgender student's case headed to the Supreme Court. Those details are coming up. Mid-50s, live look outside over the bay. This pretty much looks like what you can expect through a majority of the day. Rain showers tonight. Pete's tracking that for you. It's coverage you can count on. Good morning, I'm meteorologist Pete Mangione. In terms of how much rain we're going to get, well, I'm starting this at 5 p.m., taking you overnight. And, you know, this isn't going to be a huge drought buster, but I think most of us can reasonably expect about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch of rain. And those areas which get stuck underneath some heavier downpours, which is possible, could easily get a half an inch or even one inch of rain. But I think that will be more isolated. In general, a widespread quarter to a half an inch can be expected. We'll talk more about your Halloween future cast and especially trick-or-treating coming up in just a few minutes. Brian. Pete, thank you. The waitress who was attacked by Arthur DeRosa at Bertucci's in Taunton back in May, celebrating the birth of her new baby. She made the announcement this week. And in case you missed it, here's Eyewitness News reporter Madeline Wright with her story.
Sheena Savoy announced the birth of her baby girl on Facebook. She didn't say the girl's name, but she did say she's thankful. It's it, fantastic news. I mean, I, I couldn't be happier for her. Rosemary Heath yeah. met Savoy on May 10th, the day Savoy was stabbed at Bertucci's restaurant inside the Silver City Galleria Mall in Taunton. Rosemary and her husband George were eating dinner. Savoy was waitressing. We heard um, Sheena scream. We didn't know if she was burned or, or what had happened. So when we looked left, um, we'd seen a man standing next to her. And then we saw him stab her. And I locked eyes with her, and she was just screaming, help me, help me. That's when George sprang into action, sacrificing himself to save others. And George had pushed Sheena to the ground, completely away from him, um, and then grabbed um, the assailant and turned him away from us, and then took a step back and went back in to lock him around the elbow so he couldn't lift the knife up again. And the... Um, assailant had gotten broken his arm free and stabbed George. The carnage ended when an off-duty police officer shot and killed the suspect, Arthur DeRosa. Rosemary is trying not to focus on her husband's death. Instead, she's thinking about the positives. George would, would not have hesitated in any other circumstances to help someone. And um, it's unfortunate that we lost him. Um, but it's, just, it's fantastic that this baby's healthy. And that was Madeline Wright reporting. Rosemary says she does hope to see the baby soon. Your time now is 842. Still to come on Eyewitness News, taking a look back at this week's road show. The we Rewind is coming up. Plus, a transgender student's case headed to the Supreme Court. What's being disputed coming up? And a mild start this morning. We'll finish the day with some rain showers. We're going to break down the timing coming up next. You're watching Eyewitness News on WPRI 12. It's coverage you can count on. Welcome back. A Virginia high school student's case to use the boys' restroom headed to the Supreme Court now. Born a female, he identifies as a male. Gavin Grimm is a transgender student in the Gloucester Public School District in Virginia. The Obama administration says students who are transgender should be allowed to use restrooms and locker rooms with their gender identities. However, more than a dozen states are putting a hold on that issue. To me, this is, this is one way that, that the school is saying we don't believe that who you are is legitimate. The Supreme Court, by the way, does plan to hear that case this winter with a ruling expected in June. Until then, Gavin Grimm will not be able to use the boys' bathroom. 
Certainly a lot of fun going on in the road show this week. A trip to a corn maze. They also chatted with the stars of Kindred Spirits. Let's check out this week's Roadshow Rewind. We're getting into the fall fun from corn mazes. To encounter some spooky spirits. Check it out. Let's fire up some corn. What scares you? Not ghosts. People. Yeah, live people. <laughs> yeah. It's just really exciting to feel like you might be making a difference with the future generation of our country. Hey, hey bada, 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 swing, bada. Bada. Hey, Kennedy, Kennedy, Kennedy give it so wing, bada. bada. Here we go, kids. Oh! We have no house number, <laughs> and the sushi guy doesn't know where to go. Where's my sushi? <laughs> <laughs> back streets, back, all right. One more. Oh, come on, I got this. How do you not weigh, like, a gajillion pounds, first of all. Well, first being of all, you kind of you're trying to get used to the smells and the and the product being around all the time. You do. I could get used to this. Yeah! Yeah! Come on! I knew I could get it. Paper, you're going to find it here on set because on I the brought other side of the a, house. a glitter that, pumpkin in. Yeah. No matter how hard we try, <laughs> it'll be in the newsroom somehow. I take out the trash. That's a good yeah, thing, right? That is a good thing. I, I, I vacuum. The I empty the, I load the dishwasher and empty the dishwasher. Wow. I'm a catch. Everywhere I've gone, all over the world, I always end up inevitably coming across um, cases of animal abuse, neglect. Uh, do you want to comment on that, Brendan? I don't even really need to be here, <laughs> but it's still <laughs> good to be here. You know what, next time you can sit this one out. Naughty boys and I just be you. You'll smack your lips when you eat those pizza chips. At the original Italian bakery. And don't miss our Halloween spooktacular <laughs> special tomorrow morning. We are on weekdays at 9 a.m. on WPRI 12 and live streaming at Roadshow.com. Now, here's meteorologist Pete Mangione with your live Pinpoint Doppler 12 future cast. All right, speaking of spooktacular, that's one of the items in what we're tracking in the weather headlines. So let's put that on the screen right now. In fact, that is item number two with a spooktacular Halloween future cast. We will be tracking some late afternoon rain today. And then I do have a 70 in the seven day. Seven kind of a lucky number. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a few minutes. Live pinpoint Doppler 12 not showing any precipitation right now. We take you into Providence where in a few hours we'll have the Monster Dash 5K going on in Providence. And at starting time, 11 o'clock in the morning, 63 degrees, fairly mild, certainly milder than at this time yesterday morning. Here comes the rain, but it takes a while to get here. So no washouts from the future cast today. In fact, a pretty good outdoor day. 2 p.m. through about 4, you could see a few sprinkles here and there, but the steadier, heavier showers hold off. After 5 or 6 p.m., you can expect some of those to move through. 9 p.m., heavy at times, and then after midnight, showers will clear out, and that will set up a sunny drive to work on Monday morning for Halloween. Of course, we'll talk about Halloween night with a very special graphic, hopefully a graphic that doesn't scare you too much, coming up in just a few minutes. Sunshine out in Newport right now. We'll have a mix of sun and clouds today. Temperatures have been sitting in the upper 50s all morning long from westerly into Newport, and in the 50s in Providence, we're 54 in Smithfield, so rather pleasant for that early morning walk or jog. Winds right now fairly calm. They'll be about 5 to 10 miles an hour from the northwest today. Not that big a deal as the system will glide in here from the west. Now because this is a fast mover, it's in and out pretty quickly. So by uh, late tomorrow morning, sunshine behind it with some gusty winds. We will see some cooler winds moving in and that will knock down our temperatures a bit. The temperatures increasing today, that's for sure. 1 p.m. 63 with a mix of sun and clouds. 66 by around 3 p.m. will give you about a 20% chance of showers at that point. The better chance of showers would be early this evening through the evening hours. So maybe you're uh, outside enjoying the day before the rain arrives. Beautiful day to be outside, play some golf, maybe do some yard work or just walk around randomly. Whatever. 66 your high in Oak Valley, 67 Charlestown, westerly at 67 degrees. Mid 60s here in northern Rhode Island, 64 from Woonsocket, 64 Burville, and 64 in Situate. Eastern Massachusetts temperatures also in the mid 60s, 65 from Attleboro into Seekonk, and 64 in Fall River, 66 in Westport. So, a few things to go over here in the seven day. 51, a high temperature tomorrow. Now, tomorrow night, it's going to cool off, and we'll still have some breezy conditions. So, maybe a layer underneath some of those costumes, but you know, it's Halloween. It's the end of October. Temperatures not that unusual for this time of year, down to around 44 degrees at 7 p.m., 9 p.m., 41. Notice what you do not see here. You do not see raindrops. So, 
that's good news. We like that for Halloween. Now, as we increase the temperatures throughout the middle of the week, that could be scary if you don't like the warm temperatures because by Thursday, I have a 70 in the future cast. Could we see any records? Likely not. The record for this day is actually 78 degrees, but certainly above normal. The normal for Thursday is 58 degrees. Now behind some showers on Thursday evening into Friday morning, we will knock down these temperatures down to around 56 by Friday afternoon. And you know the drill. When we're this many days out, timing could change on these showers, as could the shower intensity. So just stay tuned as we walk towards that forecast towards the end of the week. Saturday looks okay for now with upper 50s and a mix of sun and clouds. You can always get an updated future cast over on our website at WP.